All right, all right, okay, fine. We'll talk about J.C. Treader. This is the Twitter Tuesday episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast. <laughs> You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. You can find the show on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. And thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. Today is, of course, Twitter Tuesday. So if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at Luke Braun NFL or at Locked On Vikings on Twitter. If you have a question in the middle of the week, use the Google form in the show notes because um, uh, that's one that I'll actually like come back around and check if you like add it at me at like, like a, on a Thursday. It's, I'm never going to go back and find it. Uh, or you can always send an email as well to lockdownvikingspodcast at gmail.com. Um, today, the first couple questions are about a guy that I think I've been asked about in like every mailbag and I've answered some of them and I haven't answered some of them. And it's like, all right, let's just put this to bed. So let's do the, 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 the JC Treader conversation. And that, that conversation starts with a question from School Pinion who says, is there any truth to J.C. Treader not being able to practice last year because his knees are so bad? And if so, why would anyone want him? So I looked into that a little, and it turned out that there is a report from Pete Smith from back when J.C. Treader was released. Pete Smith does Brown's Digest for SI, which is... I think a little bit more informal than like proper Sports Illustrated. So I don't know like the legitimacy of that at all. I'm just not familiar with, with that. So I don't know. Um, but sure. Okay. If that is the case, um, yep, that'll do it <laughs> for, you know, center over for 30, um, who was a fine quality dude for Cleveland. But like, if he's not healthy and you're not sure if he can be healthy and you know, if, if like, can he pass a physical like those questions, then that would be the kind of guy that just doesn't get signed. Um, and I guess my, my question for a lot of people is like, how did you come to be so hell bent on JC? There are a lot of people like I see people with like Twitter display names that are like JC Treader or fire Quasi. Like people are super, super into Treader, and he seems like just kind of a guy and if you want to go get like a new center, um, I don't. I feel like there were a couple of names on that list to start free agency that I preferred over Treader. If you wanted to get a new center, but it's also like very clear that the Vikings aren't like it's time to accept that they don't agree with you. Like it's t- it's time they are they're gonna start Bradbury, y'all. Like they're just gonna they're gonna start Bradbury. Let me see it. They're gonna start Bradbury. Like it's happening. So I, no, they're not getting Treader. Um, and if if it's because of his knees, that would totally make sense. But I. I don't, I'm not a reporter. I don't, I don't have the access to that information. Um, Observed Idiocy asks a similar question. What is the probability that the Vikes make the playoffs this year with or without acquiring J.C. Treader? How many percentage points would he add to that probability? So for a center, for really for any player that's not a quarterback, the, the percentage is probably a single-digit number. Like we're, we're not talking about this like life-altering change to the team or whatever. Um, if he can't pass a physical, the answer is zero. <laughs> but I don't know any. I don't know about that. But again, like I, I think about like, is it because you know his name? Like, is it a name familiarity thing because he's the union president? Like, is that why? Like, because I, I think a lot of people, and like, if you think for two seconds about it, you won't do this. But I do think that the, the your, your initial reaction will be to kind of like react to the name you know. And oh, I know that name, J.C. Treader. Um, that's a guy and like, do you actually have opinions about his play on the Browns or is that just a name, you know, like check that with yourself. If you have actual opinions about his play, if you went and you, you, you looked at, or even if you just like read something about JC Treader, you did the bare minimum of Googling him then great. And you're like, yeah, no, he would super. And I think he would improve on Bradbury and here's why. And I looked up his stats, you know, it's PFF grade or whatever, like that, that's something. Um, but I ju- it's just something I gotta like check with myself a lot too about like, Am I just reacting to a name that I'm familiar with? Or do I actually have an opinion on how this guy plays? I don't have an opinion on J.C. Treader. And unless he becomes a Viking, I probably won't get one. Um, So I I don't know where that is. But it's just really odd to me. I super get the move to want to replace Bradbury, right? Like, yeah, great. He's had abysmal PFF grades and that's everybody's life. But um, 
I, I don't know why we've latched onto this one particular guy who's more famous for being the union president. I don't know. Moving on. Derek McKenzie asked, given the rate at which wide receiver salaries are increasing, what do you believe is the best adjustment teams can make to maintain their salary cap and field a competitive team? Um, borrow more is going to be my answer to pretty much every version of this question. Teams don't borrow enough. The other thing is with the expanded cap environment, you know, a, a tw- let's say you borrowed 10% of next year's cap, um, and then the year after that you borrow 10% of that same year's cap. Well, 10% of 2021's cap is a lot less money than 10% of 2020's, 2022's cap. And so the, the differences will kind of just get washed away as, as the cap explodes. And all these teams that did all these borrowing, the Saints and the Eagles and yeah, the Vikings and the Rams and all these teams that did all this Packers are getting there are going to like not be punished as bad as we think because there's just going to be so much more money to go around. Maurice Morth asks, would you sign Barr back if you could? Um, <laughs> kind of the same answer as J.C. Treader. If he can pass a physical? But I genuinely don't know. Um, the knee tendonitis that he was dealing with is, I think, the result of medical decisions that he made as a rookie um, and just wear and tear over time. I I, I don't think he has the same athleticism he used to have, and I don't know if he even has a playing future at all. If he is healthy, if you could say, yeah, Anthony Barr is healthy, oh, then absolutely, I slam it, right? He's still a quality player. He knows what he's doing. He might not have the speed that he once did, but he's got a veteran savvy and leadership and stuff like that. That would be awesome. For sure. I don't need room on the roster for that. I cut a random futures squad guy and then put him on the roster and let competition work things out. But I don't I don't know if that's in the cards. Uh, Squeaks asks, come week one, do you think Chandon Sullivan will be a starter? I think he'll be the starting nickel. And I, I don't there's like no competition for that. So he'll be the nickel, the slot cornerback in nickel sets. Um, and I think it's just a matter of if you consider that a starter. I probably do. Um, but it's like it, or is will the three safety be the more predominant five defensive back package where you have two corners and three safeties instead of the normal three corners, two safeties? Um, I don't know. Depends on your definition of a starter, but like you probably define what he'll be as a starter because nickel's a, a really um, common package. He'll probably be in like more than half the snaps if that's the line you want to draw. I got a lot more questions uh, to get to, but first things first, let me talk to you about your car. It's important to have everything you need locked away in there before you need it, man. Don't get screwed up by having a blown tire and not having that tire kit in your car. And you can get all of that stuff at rockauto.com. Or if you're like a total gearhead, you can get anything there. I mean, you could get supplies and motor oils and transmission fluids and stuff. You can enter your make and your year and your model and Rock Auto does a lot of the research for you. They'll only give you options that are compatible with your car. Whatever it is you get at rockauto.com, just make sure you let them know in the how you heard about us section that Locked On sent you. Because if you don't, the rabbits will quietly and shamefully recede from public life in light of their allegations. Rock Auto, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Thanks again for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. You can find that on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Let's move on with this Twitter Tuesday mailbag. The next question comes from Ragnar's Ghosts, who asks, what statistics actually matter? Well, (laughs) none of them, if you really think. No, I'm just kidding. Um, So you're probably asking more about, like, what statistics do I, like, trust? And the way I like to approach this is, okay, what question am I answering? And then what statistics answer that question? Like, if I'm answering, is this quarterback good? You can't look at a number, man. You can look at EPA per play. You can look at stuff. It'll all be predictive, and it all has all the good traits you want a number to have. But it won't tell you if he's an aggressive quarterback. you got to maybe look at average depth of target for that. But even that's so scheme-influenced, you know, you might have to adjust for that. And then, you like, if, if you really want to answer a question truthfully and know 100% that you have the right answer and that you're not being misled, I think you have to pair it with tape. And I don't think you can look at tape Unless you have all the hours in the world to grind 600 snaps, you have to contextualize tape with stats. The power of stats is that they can give you the full picture of every rep. And the power of tape is that they can tell you what actually happened on a given one. That's where I think if you have one but not the other, you're going to be missing a part of the picture. 
But if you want like a good quarterback stat, I think anything that's based on EPA will do all right for you, whether it's just EPA per play or ESPN's QBR is like basically EPA. Um, if you want a uh, an accuracy thing, you could do like completion percentage over expectation, but some charting places like PFF and I think SIS have like actual accuracy percentages now where they're actually charting this and deciding is the thing accurate. You can look at that kind of stuff. Um, but what I want, like most stats answer the question, is player good or is team good at this? Yes or no. How good are they? And it's all on that good, bad spectrum. And what I want people to do is to ask more specific questions. I don't want to know if the running back was good and did he get a lot of yards. I want to know how is that running back working? Is he using vision? Is he using burst? Is he getting the edge a lot? Or is he really powerful? And is he, make, is he breaking tackles? Is he making the wrong reads? I want you to ask more specific questions and you'll realize pretty quickly that stats can be a tool to get you closer to those. Um, but if you start asking those specific questions, I think you start to get a better sense of what's actually going on on the field. And then you won't need quarterback rankings. Next question in this mailbag comes from Ryan Larson, who asks, what are the chances that Kyle Hinton makes the Vikings roster? He's listed as a guard, but can he also play center? Y'all are so desperate to get a new center. They're not doing it. I, I asked Chad Graff, he said, all indication is that they aren't doing it. Kevin O'Connell is like, yeah, we think we can fix Bradbury. They are not doing it. I don't know how, how many more people need to tell you. They're not doing it. Um, as much as you would love for them to. They're not, sorry, they're not doing it. Uh, Kyle Hinton is bad, guys. Sorry. I think he was like center four last year. He couldn't surpass Cole Cabral at it. He does have some centering experience, but that's a pretty crowded interior group. I, I don't think he's, he's got it in him to make a team. Uh, Mir Gando asks, reportedly, Jadeveon Clowney was offered 14 to 15 mil a year from other teams before signing with Cleveland. Zadarius is being paid pretty similarly, at least per year here in the Minnesota. How comparable, if at all, do you think the players are? Personally, I would much rather have Smith. They are, I think they are pretty close um, in terms, I don't know, my, my opinion on Clowney is a lot less evolved than my opinion on Zadarius because Clowney's never been a Viking. But I think they would probably play similar roles where they would like rove around the formation. Um, and and I, yeah, I think they're pretty close to me. I don't know, that, that state of affairs seems appropriate, I guess. Uh, Kilo Bobby asks, is the Kellen Mond hype just that? Next up, Realistic Vike asks, Dark Horse, bottom of the roster guys, you feel have the ability to go become a starter someday. Hmm, that's pretty difficult. Um, it would be probably easiest to, to say somebody like Azezi Atomowo, who is like a super um, athletic prospect, or like somebody like, you know, Kyle Hinda. That would be your like surprise, like, oh my God, if he could figure it out, he's got such a great body for it. Um, I'm going to go with Blake Prohl, who tore his ACL as an undrafted rookie last year and seemed like he actually was making a run at the roster. I don't know if he would have made it, but he seemed closer than like you would usually expect an undrafted rookie to be. Um, and then he blew out his knee and, and that was that. But I don't know if you're looking for like a super, super sleeper, he's maybe closer than he should have been. Next up comes from Brandon Hippo, who says, bring back Linval Joseph. Uh, sure. He's uh, clearly not the athlete he used to be, right? But he did pretty well for the Chargers, and they run the same scheme we're running now. So maybe he fits better in that than what Mike Zimmer would have asked him to do, which I think required a little bit more lateral than just push. And I think the push ages a little bit. That strength ages a little better than speed does. So sure. Um, I don't know if I necessarily need him more than any other 335 pound guy, like just because he's the guy that played for the Vikings before, but I loved Linval. Um, so I probably wouldn't be mad at it. I've got a few more questions left to answer here, but first let me talk to you about the best tasting protein bar on the planet and the new crime they have committed. It's called Brownie Batter Puffs. I've been talking to you about the marshmallowy uh, built bar puffs for a while. They are protein bars, believe it or not. Uh, that tastes like candy bars, that tastes like something you would get on Easter. They're like marshmallowy, all covered in 100% chocolate or white chocolate, and they're delicious. Like these things max out at like nine grams of sugar and they taste like a 30 gram of sugar candy bar. Um, it's awesome. And their newest one is Brownie Batter Puff, which tastes like when you were a kid or an adult, no judgment, uh, that would lick the batter off of the spatula as, as before the brownies are baked. It tastes like that, like they captured it. It's amazing. 
You can always get all your favorite Built Bar originals like chocolate caramel or chocolate raspberry, uh, chocolate mint, you know, the classics at Built.com. Whatever you buy, use promo code LOCK15. You get 15% off of your order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, promo code at checkout, LOCKED15 for 15% off of your order at Built.com. Moving on with this mailbag, let's continue with one from Jimmy Bergeson, who says, can you find some time to talk about Luigi Villan? Even just a small discussion on a Tuesday mailbag, and then talked about how like he couldn't find anything. Yeah, it's hard to find stuff on Luigi Villan, because he didn't play a lot until Wake Forest. His tape at Wake Forest from, I haven't watched it myself, but what I've heard is people seem to like it, and he flashed some interesting ability. Um, but basically, his college career was being stuck at Michigan behind a bevy of total dudes, right? So this is a very Jalen Holmes-esque career arc where Jalen Holmes was stuck behind like various Bosa's at Ohio State and we never got to know, but he was like, maybe he could be a guy that was good, you know, and he was a rotational guy and he flashed a little ability and he didn't really work out. Um, but this is kind of the same idea that like, well, maybe he's been secretly good and they just like also had David Ajabo. Like, I don't know. And I think transferring to Wake Forest was his him saying, uh, I'm not going to get playing time, I need to get playing time. And and that is, I mean, if it weren't for both Ajabo and Aiden Hutchinson being in Michigan, um, that would be a bigger red flag to me. But it's also like, well, now we don't have any tape, so how can I draft a guy that I don't, I can't watch? Um, that's where I'm at on Luigi Villan. I have legit no idea if he's good or not, or if Wake Forest was a fluke. And if it was a fluke, there certainly have been more extreme fluky years. Um, so it's like not even that exciting of a fluke. And I think that's why he didn't get drafted. Um, the edge group is thin as hell, though. So if he is all he's cracked up to be, he's not going to have, he's got to outdo like Kenny Willekes to make the roster. Like it's not a difficult path. Um, I don't have him on my roster prediction because I kind of just don't trust guys that I haven't been able to watch. But hey, if he starts flashing at camp, I'll, I'll turn that around real quick. Uh, Matthew HJ asks, pick one for their next long-term contract. Whose game is the best longevity? Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel, or AJ Brown? Um, not Debo, because, I mean, Debo even knows this, <laughs> that his game doesn't have longevity, which is why he's asked the 49ers to not have him in that role anymore. And that's like at the center of his problems. Um, AJ Brown, that nice physical style that is also a deep threat. I think that'll age really gracefully. I think Justin Jefferson is very similar to AJ Brown in that they, they like, I think Justin Jefferson has enough deception in his routes. Like he's a very tricksy route runner that he will age gracefully eventually, but also he's still so young that like a, a, a second contract would be great on him. And then, uh, Jamar Chase, I think same deal. I, I long-term probably take Jamar Chase. I think he's probably my favorite of all of those. Um, but I, I don't think you could really go wrong with Jefferson or AJ Brown or Jamar. I guess AJ Brown has had some health issues, so maybe not him. But yeah, take it either one of these LSU dudes, and uh, you'll you'll be cooking with gas. Um, ben Perkins asks, how does CJ Ham fit with the Vikings' new offense? This is a tough question, and I can't really answer it because Kevin O'Connell, McVay style offenses haven't really used a fullback. You got to go to the Shanahan version for that, which Kevin O'Connell has worked under but doesn't have as much familiarity with. I mean, he's been there, and maybe they'll steal some concepts and stuff. But whatever it is, we're going to see it. The Vikings are going to use a fullback, they're going to use 21 personnel. They even brought Jake Vargas back to be that stashed practice squad fullback. They're using a fullback. Um, so we'll, we'll find out what it is. Really. I think it's whatever run play is in a wide zone or is in the McVay version. You can do like a lead version of that. So instead of doing like lead mid zone, uh, or instead of doing like mid zone, which is what they say their, uh, staple is going to be, which is like a less crazy version of outside zone where it's more like an off tackle, you know, trying to sweep stuff around the edge and the bootlegs aren't quite as crazy. And then it's not quite as exploitable. Um, and I think that's their idea. Uh, but there's a little bit more pushing involved, so you need bigger guys, and that's why they've gone out and gotten, you know, the, the Chris Reeds and the Ed Ingrams and stuff. But you could do mid-zone, and then you could just do, like, lead mid-zone, where instead of a tight end blocking on the backside, you've got a fullback who's doing a lead block, and then it's, like, roughly the same blocking scheme and the similar techniques and stuff, um, and you just put a fullback in it. So I, I don't think it's easy, or I don't think it's very hard to work a fullback into that scheme it's a matter of if that scheme is good and if it fits everybody else you know like are we now wasting dalvin cook's superhuman ability to get to the edge that kind of stuff lucas vdb asks who's the celebrity guest that you most want to blow the galler horn um i don't really have like 
a super emotional one or anything, so I'm just going to go with friend of the show, Johnny Pemberton, uh, comedian, actor, and uh, dignitary. Strawyot asks, who would win in a fight? Favre, Cousins, Tark, or Tommy Kramer? And then I had to clarify, physical peak or like now, and he said physical peak. At their physical peak, I don't know if there's, there are a few people I would walk into an alley with before I would walk into an alley with Brett Favre at his physical peak. That dude is completely insane, had no regard for his own well-being, and that's the last guy you want to fight. So I think I think Tark just like cleans, or I think uh, Favre cleans house. Um, T- Tommy Kramer is a little tougher. I, Fran Tarkenton was not like a big, strong guy. Like he was kind of wiry in his younger days when he was probably in his like prime playing days. And, um, I don't know. I, cousins, I don't know if he would even fight back. He's such a little pacifist. I, he, he might just take, you know, turn the other cheek. Omar asks, are there more eyes or legs in the world? More difficult question than I thought on, uh, off the bat, but I thought about this a bunch. I had a lot of driving to do today and I thought about it a bunch. Um, so my, I'm going to go with legs because A, there's a lot of four-legged animals in the world. There are a lot of insects in the world, probably more insects than fish, I would guess. And fish are really the only thing you have that are more eyes than legs, right? Or like certain bugs, if you want to count like a fly's eye as like a bunch of little eyes. But I don't know. Every mosquito has two eyes and six legs. And uh, there are a lot of mosquitoes. More mosquitoes, I think then and insects generally not to mention once you get to the world of like centipedes and millipedes that can account for tons of fish um but i'm i refuse to google that so if i'm wrong deal with it um kyle slavey asks is the ocean a soup or a tea what a uh, purple velour asks in over in honor of obi-wan kenobi p- premiering later this week which star wars character do you want on the 2022 vikings and why i mean any jedi right but i have to imagine like if you actually brought in a jedi if you were like here's luke skywalker and he is a viking now and he's going to use you know force push to be a lead blocker they would probably outlaw that pretty quick like they would make rules against using your force powers and stuff so you need somebody with just a lot of god-given ability um, and not necessarily magic space wizard stuff. And for that, I think you got to go with Chewbacca at tight end, right? Big box out tight end. He'd be an awesome blocker. Yeah, give me Chewbacca. Uh, Reverend Brody has the last one for today. He says, top three exotic animals that if you had guaranteed safety, you'd want as a pet. I'm slamming Snow Leopard. And I, I assume you also been guaranteed safety for the animal because I have no idea how to care for one of these things. But I assume if like if that's handled for me, then we're good. I'm slamming snow leopards. I'm slamming red pandas. Uh, those would be awesome. And then beyond that, uh, something weird, I think. Um, and I'm also assuming that I have all three of these at the same time. And I've got like two like good, cute, fluffy ones. Give me like a big old snake. I want a big old snake. That'd be pretty cool. Like a big anaconda. I love those things. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of snakes. And I think that they're very cute. And I like that they smell with their tongues. Um, I think that's adorable. So I'm going to go with a big giant snake. Thank you so much for listening to this Twitter Tuesday mailbag episode. We'll be back tomorrow. With any luck, I'll be doing a Caleb Evans um, at some point this week. I got to think we're going to get there. Um, Otherwise, we'll just keep doing some history stories. I got some really fun ones queued up for you. So we will talk about all of that tomorrow. Go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, Skull.